Toastmasters, um, distinguished guests. At some point in every young boy's life, he wants to, he comes to the, to the idea, he has an idea that he's strong enough and mature enough to handle all of life's problems on his own terms. It's his attempt to say, I'm not a man, but if called upon, I could be the man of the house. And then fate intercedes and allows him, or intervenes, and allows him the opportunity to prove it. And when that chance comes, the young man will tell himself, I can handle this. And then without asking any permission to try, he will try. Now the problem is, when the dust settles, does he become a goat or a hero? The real problem is, if he's successful, great, but if he's not, what does that do to his self-esteem? Does he, does he fail so in such a devastating and humiliating way that he never again attempts to be the hero that he hoped to be in his younger years? Now, I've had that problem before. I was 13 when I had to address it. Fortunately for me, I was born in the latter part of the 20th century, and no less in America, because frankly, being a being man of a house in the modern age is much easier. If you've ever read anything about the Old West, you'd have that father come out. Yeehaw, hey son, I'm going off. We need some supplies. I'm going off to the next town. I'll be gone about a month. So here's the family rifle. You fight off all the Comanches. I want you to plow the back 40 and remember to dig that new well because we don't want to die of thirst when come the summertime. All right. Well, take care of the women, folk. Oh, and in case they don't see you in a month, happy fifth birthday. So, yeah, those, those kids were amazing back then. And that is way too much pressure for me. Now, I, would, I would be in the back 40 curled up and crying, just, you know, waiting for my 23rd, 24th birthday or something like that. So... The way that it happens for me, and I'm 13, and almost like a story, like a scene out of the Wild West, I saw in the cover of, of night an intruder trying to kill, what was perceived to be an intruder trying to kill my pets. Now, the way that this has all started, <clears throat> my parents wanted me to learn more responsibility, so they got me a pet. One dog turned into two dogs, two dogs turned into a menagerie, including rabbits, hamsters, birds, and guinea pigs. And I fed them twice a day, I cleaned them once a week, interacted with them daily, everything was wonderful, I was totally responsible, and one night during a, a commercial break for the Sonny and Cher show, I got up, <laughs> I let the dogs in, and I walked out to make, our, make my way to, our, to further evening feeding, make sure they had water. Now, the way that our yard was set up, the animals, the, the dogs had a doghouse that they never used. The pet guinea pigs and the rabbits all had hutches, and on top of that were the bird cages and the hamster cages. Now, under that, or they were all under this lush, beautiful oak tree that offered all sorts of shade. Even in the, hot, even in the hottest Florida summers, it was very cool under there. Now, the problem was that in the, in the, even the most moonlit night, it was dark. But fortunately, we had floodlights. One pointed to the east, one pointed to the west. And to the west of the, of the house, in the backyard, was where the animals were all kept. Now, our yard was bordered off by a chain-link fence. And as I'm walking through, making my way to the, to the hutches, I'm realizing that there's a, an odd shape kind of sitting in the corner between the fence and the house. So I pivot my body, and I'm looking, and I see a gleam of an eye that just sparkles in the floodlight's illumination. And I think, oh my God. And I kind of look. I'm very hesitant, but in the darkness, I see a shadow, and it's, it's definitely, it's a diamond-shaped head. And I know that's a venomous snake. And I'm looking, and I'm pausing, and I see that it's maybe coiled up high, about four to six inches high. And based on that coil... It might be six or eight inches in diameter. My parents are reading in their study. I'm watching Sunny and Cher. So I go by my back, in a very truculent way, to, to grab to the, into the garage, and I grab a bat. It's a 38-ounce Louisville slugger. I've been trying to grow into this thing since, I, since 1969, and I, it's got Rusty Staub's name on it. It has 
and the engraving of power flights. So you know it's going to be a great battle. It's going to power net. And I'm walking back out into that backyard thinking, this pygmy rattlesnake has no idea what's coming. Now this time, I walk around. I take the long way around from behind the, the tree and behind the hutch. I'm sneaking up because I, I want to keep my eye on the reflection of that eye on, of the snake. Because if I do that, I know that it hasn't moved. It hasn't lost its position. And I can get its guard. Now, I have to move very silently. I've got to be the Shaolin monk. I've watched Kung Fu for years. <laughs> I'm, finally I'm finally quite chain Kang. And the grass is my rice paper. As I move very slowly across the yard. And I'm 15 feet away. And I'm doing great. Because I see the coil is still coiled up. The head has not moved. The reflection, the illumination, the gl gleam of the eye has yet to move. It's still looking toward the light. And I'm 10 feet away. And I raise that Louisville slugger, and I've got it above my head. And I'm thinking, okay, fast downward turn. Fast downward splash. It'll trap the head. It'll trap the head. But you've got to hit it right. Don't, don't hit the fence. Don't hit the, the house, or you're going to get bit. And I'm only guessing that it's a pygmy rattlesnake. And if I tell the poison control that it's something else, the wrong thing, I'm going to die in 30 minutes. I cannot hit the wrong thing. And I get up about four feet. I clear my mind. I clear my relax my body. And I whack that thing. Three solid times. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point where a man or a little boy decides or finds out if he's a goat or a hero. I had a lot of velocity on that hit. Uh, I'll give it that. Uh, but then the, uh, the, the, the reality kind of set in as my nostrils filled with the smell of manure and then eventually the taste in my mouth was more the same. To this day, I don't know which dog I beat that turd uh, into oblivion with my little slugger. But in the end, I did not kill a snake, but I did not kill my ambition to be a better person or to be a leader. <laughs> I went on to win trophies. I would go on to win admiration for and eventually even the police and the FBI would call me a hero. So what I learned from this is that I'm not afraid to take the lead. And all of you can feel protection behind me. Because if the proverbial crap does hit the fan, no problem. I've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!